Minnesota State Referee Committee is proud to release a new short video program called Lightning Topics. These topics will be released weekly for the next three to four months and cover issues within the laws of the game in short two to four minute videos. These videos are designed to be edgy and entertaining, but also informative and helpful in clarifying some of the law's more confusing elements. As time goes on, we may revisit certain rules as IFAB modifies them, but the goal is to provide quick and brief looks into the rules of the game and help referees, players, coaches, and fans better understand how referees do their job. Having just made the point that these topics will be short, our first release is, alas, going to be long and detailed. We'd like to talk about how referees deal with irresponsible technical area behavior, a mechanic called Ask, Tell, Dismiss, and then discuss the kinds of team official behaviors that result in referees taking steps to become actively involved in managing the technical areas. Lastly, we'll talk a bit about how referees are instructed to deal with spectators, specifically in youth matches. Alas, we really can't do any of that in a brief or edgy way, so this topic is going to look a lot more like the old MNSRC podcast than our new lightning topics. But not to worry, our initial release is going to be accompanied by our first short topic release as well. U.S. Soccer instituted a three-step process to dealing with poor behavior by team officials in approximately the late aughts. This process is called Ask, Tell, Dismiss. The idea behind this system was to clearly identify behaviors that fit into each level of management as well as provide a ladder system to help team officials understand when their behavior is beginning to threaten their privilege of remaining on the field. The first level of this system is called ask. Ask is a polite request from the referee to a team official to alter behavior. It is designed to be non-confrontational and show respect to the team official. Referees are instructed to keep their voices down when using ask, use body language that is not dominant, and, if possible, be subtle in their use of the technique. Ask should be obvious to the team official receiving the ask, but is not always obvious to anybody else on the field who's not looking for it. Behaviors that result in an ask could include persistent low-grade descent from the technical area, but the most common provocation of an ask is a team official who struggles to remain within his or her technical area. Many fields have clearly drawn technical areas, and regardless of how big or small they may be, team officials are not permitted to leave these areas unless they have the permission of the referee to do so. Sometimes coaches will wander outside the boundaries of the technical area to give instructions to field players or substitutes, and while this behavior is generally harmless, Referees are instructed to politely remind coaches to return to the technical area to avoid more antagonistic behavior from taking place outside of those boundaries. It's one thing to be giving tactical instructions to your players a few yards outside the technical area. It's another to be outside the technical area, screaming at the referee. If a field does not have a marked technical area, it is assumed to be generally be from one end of the bench to the other. Here's a great example of a referee politely asking a coach to remain within his technical area. The referee is non-confrontational and polite, even in the face of some somewhat disrespectful behavior from one of the red players on the field who thinks that the asking is uncalled for. This is exactly how we want referees to be firm but respectful in maintaining order in the technical areas. The next step in technical area management's process is tell. Tell is the technical area management equivalent of a yellow card, except referees are not permitted to show cards to non-players according to IFAB's laws of the game. This tends to create a lot of confusion and misunderstanding, because any match that's governed by IFAB's laws falls under this rule. In the United States, high school and college soccer matches allow for the carding of team officials, but games that fall under U.S. soccer's jurisdiction do not. Alas, this results in a lot of coaches thinking that they can't be disciplined until they're shown a card, and it can lead to many surprise dismissals that occur indirectly because coaches don't understand this rule. A tell is a firm warning from the referee to a team official to cease whatever behavior is provoking the tell. Unlike the ask, there is no need for the referee to be polite here. A tell is not a conversation or a discussion. It's an order focused on halting the instigating behavior. Referees should use far more dominant command presence and body language when delivering a tell. We teach officials not to paint themselves into a corner with tell language. We'd rather not have a referee warning a coach with language like, one more word out of you and you're gone. 
Instead, we want referees to use more generic language that implies more severe sanctions are coming if the behavior persists. For example, coach, I politely asked you earlier to be respectful and you have not complied. Now I'm telling you that your dissent must cease or the consequences for your behavior is going to be more severe. Behaviors that can provoke a tell include, but are not limited to, continued dissent after receiving an ask, dissenting while outside of the technical area for other reasons, or verbally confronting opposing players or the opposing technical area in a hostile manner. Referees can jump straight to tell without using an ask if the team official's behavior is egregious enough to justify it. Here we see an example of a tell given by a referee to a coach who has been dissenting loudly and repeatedly. The referee, through his hand motions, makes it clear he does not want to hear any further dissent from the coach. Lastly, we have dismiss, the team official equivalent of a red card. We're going to spend the most time on this because it's critical for both referees to understand the types of behaviors that simply cannot be tolerated, and for coaches to understand certain behaviors can result in their immediate dismissal with no other steps taken in the process. When the referee dismisses a coach, there is no card shown. The referee simply points off the field and orders the coach to leave, having been dismissed for irresponsible behavior. This quick video shows a coach being dismissed. The referee merely approaches the technical area, looks at the coach, and points, indicating to the coach that he has been dismissed. Reasons for dismissal are plentiful. Obviously, continuing to dissent after a previous ask and tell, or using personal, defamatory, derogatory, or abusive language could result in a dismissal without even going through the tell or ask step. Instigating a confrontation with an opposing player or team official using abusive language, or making physical contact with an opposing player or team official would also be grounds for immediate dismissal. If a team official specifically leaves the technical area in order to dissent, for example, charging down the touchline to visually and publicly dissent a call, or interfere with an assistant referee, this is grounds for immediate removal. Another specific behavior clearly identified by U.S. Soccer as grounds for dismissal would be kicking or throwing anything in dissent of a referee's decision. These visual and disrespectful acts are considered 100% intolerable and any referee who chooses to dismiss a coach for throwing or kicking an object within the technical area will be backed by leagues in the state referee committee for their action. Let's look at some video examples of dismissed level behavior and recommended levels of technical area management. In this first case, the referee has awarded an indirect free kick in the attacking third. The white team executes the kick to perfection first rolling the ball so it clearly moves, and then shooting into the goal. The blue coach is angry about the decision to award the free kick and can be seen ranting as he storms up the touchline back towards his bench. This visual and likely audible descent is grounds for a tell. However, as he returns to the bench, the coach then kicks a cone in anger. This coach should now be dismissed for irresponsible behavior. No ask, no tell. Next, we have a sequence of decisions from a boys game made by a young referee crew. Blue scores a goal at the far end of the field from the camera, and there certainly could be an offside decision on this play. To be fair and honest, the only person on the field who is neutral and adequately positioned to make the decision is the assistant referee, and the picture-in-picture -picture replay shows the assistant run up the line. This is the assistant signal to award a good goal, meaning that the AR saw no offside infraction on the play. That's the end of the discussion here, or it should be. Before the ensuing kickoff, the white coach calls the referee over and asks him to then quiz the AR about offside on the play. There are a few mistakes made here by both parties. First, the coach's ability to judge whether the goal scorer was offside is about on par with the camera's ability to make that decision. The coach is 60 yards off the offside line, so he has no ability to question this decision. Second, the assistant referee already made his decision. He ran up the line to give the goal. The proper response to the coach here is to remind him that he has no case to make an argument, that the assistant has already given the goal, and he should be asked to resume his coaching duties and move on. The conversation that the referee has with the AR here serves no purpose. The assistant is not suddenly going to say, oh, wait, you're right, the player who scored was offside. I don't know why I ran up the line. In the second half now, Blue converts another goal off another very close offside decision. 
The camera is much closer this time, but the angle of the camera still cannot provide any evidence for or against an offside call. The coach again visually dissents, raising his arm for offside, even though his angle is at best similar to the camera angle, and likely worse than the camera angle. The coach appears to let his complaint go somewhat quickly, and this action should not provoke any formal response from the referee, but the visual and public dissent, when it is once again completely unfounded, should be catalogued as a, quote, strike against the coach, should he continue to act irresponsibly in the technical area. Later in the second half, the referee awards Blue a penalty kick for a handling offense. First, the state referee committee would issue advice to all involved parties, referees, coaches, players, that this is probably not a handling offense at this level. The white defender misses on an attempted volley clearance and is off balance when the ball pops off the ground back at him and hits him in the arm. There are no blue attackers close enough to play this ball and take advantage. The contact here is completely accidental, so especially at the youth level, this should not be a handling offense and we do not recommend awarding a penalty kick. Having said that, the coach's response to the decision fits the description of dismissible behavior to AT. He throws his hat into the air in frustration. Based on his intransigent behavior in response to the two earlier offside decisions, there's no need to use an ask or a tell with the coach here. The coach should be dismissed. For good measure, a bit later, Blue plays a through ball to an attacker who, based on the limited screen view and camera angle, does appear to be clearly offside. However, the ball is played with too much pace and is going to go out for a goal kick. There might be a slight advantage from awarding an indirect free kick where the offside player is, but ultimately the outcome of the play is the same. Blue loses possession, White has the restart. The coach throws his arms into the air, jumps up and down throwing a temper tantrum, then removes his cap and fires it at the ground in disgust. There is truly no reason this coach should have been permitted to finish this game on his team's bench. He could have and should have been dismissed for either of those last two blow-ups. Referees, take this to heart. Do not tolerate this sort of behavior. Coaches, take this to heart. Act like this and you will probably get dismissed. And it's your fault for not controlling yourself. We wholeheartedly admit that the penalty decision was harsh and that the player in the last clip looked like he was offside. That does not justify acting like a toddler on the touchline. Disagreement cannot mean disrespect. Lastly, we want to review how we ask referees to deal with irresponsible behavior from spectators, specifically in youth matches. It would seem there's a vast gulf in the understanding of how officials are expected to manage the match environment. The State Referee Committee has been told, with no false pretenses, that it is completely unacceptable for youth spectators to verbally abuse referees or players. The governing bodies for youth soccer in Minnesota have made it clear they will stand behind any referee who acts to ensure the match atmosphere remains dignified and respectful. Nonetheless, the method that is used to accomplish this is greatly misunderstood. The laws of the game do not give the referee direct authority over any spectators. Referees cannot and should not ever directly address a spectator who is acting irresponsibly. At the game's highest levels, security in the stadiums is responsible for dealing with spectators who are out of control. However, even at the professional level, referees still need to ensure the safety of the players by suspending matches to allow for security to act against spectators who are causing issues. At the amateur level, where security does not exist, the behavior of the spectators falls upon the responsibility of team representatives present at the match, and in most cases, this means the coaches. If a spectator is making audible, disrespectful comments at a youth match about members of the officiating crew or the opposing team, the State Referee Committee asks its referees to suspend the match, approach both coaches, and ask them to cross the field and address the spectators to remind them of their responsibilities to set a good example for the kids on the field. This means actually crossing the field and speaking directly to your parents. It does not mean looking across the field and yelling shut up at your parents. Haha, ha, you may laugh. It's truly remarkable how many times we've seen coaches think that yelling shut up at your parents somehow fulfills their responsibility. In truth, yelling shut up at your parents is just as disrespectful and irresponsible as the actions that cause the referee to make the request of the coach in the first place. If the coach is unwilling to comply this, with this request, Referees are instructed to either dismiss the coach and ask the assistant coach to comply 
or simply terminate the match. Many of you watching this probably think this is all a ridiculous exercise in overbearing match control and supports referees with egos. My answer to you is, watch this video from the 2018 Major League Soccer Western Conference Final between Sporting Kansas City and the Portland Timbers at Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City. Diafania. Savarese is still waving him forward. Delica over the top. And Bobisi. Emilia. It's headed in by Valeri. And it counts. The flag stays down. And the Timbers have turned this game upside down. Well, some stuff has uh, been thrown on the field in the aftermath of Valeri's goal. PA announcement being made. I think Mark Geiger has called all the players off the field. Yep. He has. Well, this will be the second time in the MLS playoffs we've seen this. Uh, if this is indeed the case, we saw it uh, at LAFC against RSL in the knockout round game. So it's just going to give the fans a cooling off period. Here. So all the Portland Timbers players celebrating over that far side and obviously uh, some objects raining down from the crowd on them. I think Peter Vermees is uh, going to stroll across to the cauldron. There he is. He's, he's pleading with his own fan base here for some sanity. They're pointing in the direction of the far side, saying that's where it came from, saying it wasn't us. And now Vermees will take a stroll over there. Well, this is extraordinary. In case you weren't paying attention, after Portland scored to take the lead, a sporting supporter threw a beer can at the Portland players who were celebrating near the touchline. In response to this, the referee, the recently retired Mark Geiger, who had just worked the 2018 World Cup in Russia over the summer, having served as a referee in a round of 16 elimination match and as the VAR for the third place game, had the players clear the field for their safety. When Geiger brought the players over, sporting head coach Peter Vermees had a brief conversation with Geiger, then walked onto the field, crossed the field, and ordered his fans to knock it off. I've got news for you. If a World Cup referee can suspend a first division cup semifinal match for spectator behavior, and if a first division professional team manager, who happened to also be the Major League Soccer Sporting Executive of the Year, will cross the field to verbally approach and warn his fans to stop acting like spoiled children in a nationally televised match, I am pretty sure that all of us can work together to deal with irresponsible spectators at youth matches using the same technique. This is the exact same technique that the youth governing bodies in Minnesota want referees and coaches to use to deal with spectator misconduct. Referees, you have no excuse after seeing this. You don't deal with spectators directly. You ask the coaches to do so. Coaches, you have no excuse after seeing this. If Peter Vermees can deal with his spectators in the MLS Conference Finals, I'm pretty sure we're not asking too much of you to do the same in your U15 matches. As always, if you have any further questions on this topic, please don't hesitate to contact us through www.minnesotasrc.com.